How do you handle IELTS speaking part two? I think there are two ways that work really well. Let me show you both with a couple of part two questions and answers. You know, the other day, a student said to me, he said, Keith, what do you think of the PPF method for part two vial speaking? And I said, the PPF method? Now, as it happens, I had actually seen a video about this and there is a teacher on YouTube who proposes the PPF method. It's the tell a story in the past, tell a story in the present and a story in the future, past, present, future. Um, for IELTS speaking part two. And I said, you know, it's hard enough telling one story, never mind three stories. I think maybe it's over complicating the matter. I would keep things simple. I said to this student, and I say to you, I think there are two simple, very good approaches to part two. One, the structured approach two, the free flowing approach. So in this video, I'll show you how each one works um, through a couple of uh, part two questions and model answers. That way you can learn the approach and some really useful language as well. In addition, I will tell you about my plans for Black Friday this November 2022. Also, there is a PDF of today's lesson. You can download that. So watch to the end of the video. I'll tell you more about it or just go down to the description now and get it. <laughs> and by the way, if you don't know me, my name is Keith. Um, I have the YouTube channel English Speaking Success and the website The Keith Speaking Academy. So listen, let's get cracking with the first approach, the structured approach. OK, to show you the structured approach, let's take a part two question, right? Here's a task card or a cue card. Describe a positive change that you made, OK? Now, here the approach would be, first, you have a minute to prepare, right? Tick tock, tick tock. Get a general idea of what you want to talk about, right? What's the positive change? Then follow each bullet point in your talk, OK? In your one minute, you'll get a brief idea of what you want to say for each bullet point. If you've got time, only one minute, try and prepare your first sentence so you start confident with a bang, right? And remember, right, in IELTS Speaking Part 2, you can keep the task card and your notes and refer to your notes when you're speaking, right? You don't have to memorize it. Look at your notes. In this structured approach, coherence is really important. The way you're connecting each block or bullet point that you're going to talk about. This is a great method. It's simple, it's structured, um, really good to do. Let's have a look for this question at my notes. This is what I did in one minute, right? I decided to talk about walking in the morning, every morning. Um, why? Because doctor's advice and who I did it with, well, alone actually, um, although my wife encouraged me and I felt great about it. So all that in a minute. Now let's have a look at what the model answer or my answer actually looks like. So um, the positive change that I would like to tell you about is when I decided decided to start getting up really early in the morning and going for a brisk walk. The reason I made this change, well, it's because previously I was under a lot of strain at work. I mean, I had a lot on my plate. I felt stressed out, um, even burnt out a lot of the time. And I noticed my physical health and mental health were deteriorating. So I went to see the doctor and the doctor gave me some advice. He said, basically, it's not so much your physical health is the problem, it's your mental health. And one of the best things you can do is to go out into the countryside for one hour every day 
Get out of the kind of rut that you're in at work. Get out of that environment into the countryside and just do some simple exercise, walking or cycling. So following the doctor's advice, I decided to make this change. When it comes to who I did it with, well, I do it alone, actually. I mean, I must admit my wife was very supportive and she encouraged me to do this. She said, you know, I'll do the school run. I'll look after the kids. You do go and do your walk in the morning, which I did. Uh, and yeah, when it comes to how I feel about it, I felt absolutely great. I mean, it was really beneficial. I noticed a marked improvement in my health uh, and well-being and my mental health. Um, I wasn't lazy all the time. I just had more energy. So I felt really good about this change. Great, so that's the model answer. Now, what I'm going to do is, this is something I do in my online courses, is I'm just gonna analyze that model answer to show you some really useful vocabulary, some grammar, and even coherence, so that you can also give much better answers in your IELTS speaking, okay? So let's have a look at what I said. I'll start first with coherence and these kind of signposts that are indicating what I'm going to say next, because this is a structured approach. The positive change I would like to tell you about is, right, the DDD I would like to tell you about is, it makes it so clear what you're going to say. And then later, the reason I made this change is, Again, the examiner knows you're going to be explaining and giving a reason. Makes it so much more coherent. Talking about vocabulary, I said a brisk walk, which is a nice collocation, meaning a quick walk. And then lots of phrases, meaning to feel stress. I said, I was under a lot of strain at work to feel stress to have a lot on your plate. I had a lot on my plate. I had a lot of activities that made me stressed or stressed out, burnt out. All of these mean the same. Notice I repeat the same thing two or three times with different words. In speaking, that's fine. You wouldn't do that in writing, but in speaking you can. Finally, deteriorating just means getting worse. Okay, lovely. Moving on. Here I've just picked out some grammar items in green. Okay, so I went to see the doctor and he gave me some advice. He said, it's not so much your physical health, that's the problem, it's your mental health. Now this structure, it's not so much A, that's the problem, it's B. It's just emphasizing so really you're saying the problem is not A, it's B. But we can make it more emphatic, right? It's not A that's the problem, it's B. And then much more natural, it's not so much A that's the problem, it's B. Lovely, simple structure. You can use it in many contexts, um, not only to talk about problems, but here let's just focus on talking about problems, which is really useful, right, in IELTS speaking. And then I said, one of the best things you can do is, so instead of saying, right, advice, you should do this, um, you ought to do this. One of the best things you can do is, right, it's much richer language. One of the best things you can do and get the rhythm, D, 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 D. One of the best things you can do. Great. So one of the best things you can do is practice your English. Lovely bit of grammar. Moving on, we then, uh, so following the doctor's advice, I decided to make this change. When it comes to who I did it with, so I'm signposting because I've moved on to the next bullet point. When it comes to this, ba, 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 ba. Uh, vocabulary, we can talk about the school run, 
My wife said, I'll do the school run. That means to take the children to school. Great natural expression. And then finally, this grammatical bit. Um, she said, I'll do the school run. You go for a walk, which I did. Now I could say, and I did it. But here, again, this is when somebody advises us or recommends or asks or tells us to do something. We can just say, which I did at the end, right? She told me to go for a walk, which I did instead of, and I did. And that reference, the which referring back to go for a walk, it, it's lovely. It's such natural English, which will make your examiner go, ooh, that's nice. He advised me to go, which I did. She told me to leave, which I did. She asked me to help, which I did. So when you've got that structure with a advise, help to, to do something, which I did in the past tense. Lovely, lovely grammatical structure. Finally, wrapping up just something, picking out vocabulary, emphasizing to you the importance of collocations. I noticed a marked improvement in my health, right? Is I noticed a big improvement. There are different collocations, right? We can say a significant improvement, a marked improvement. The key message to you is don't just think about complex words. Think about collocation, right? Improvement. It's not a complex word, but a marked improvement. That'll make your examiner go, ooh, nice. So there we go. That is looking at the model answer. So there we've seen the model answer, some coherence, some nice vocabulary and grammar, grammar <laughs> that can help you improve your spoken English. There's more. Let's have a look at some more to make you an even more confident English speaker. Now, you may be thinking, Keith, this is great. Where can I find more model answers like this? Well, good question. And my answer is you could find these in my online course, IELTS Speaking Success, Get a Band 7 Plus Gold. What you get there is ideas, model answers, language analysis, quizzes, the full Monty, lots of stuff. And the good news is Black Friday is coming and I'm celebrating. Yes, on the 25th of November, 2022, there will be discounts, free live lessons. On Saturday the 26th, I'll be doing some live lessons with free PDFs, games, quizzes, some free prizes. You can even win a mock IELTS speaking test with me one on one with feedback. Lovely. So what you can do is if you download the PDF to this video, in the description below, you can get on the mailing list and I'll let you know more about the Black Friday deals. If you don't want emails, and I know they can be a pain in the arse sometimes, that's fine. You don't have to do that. You can also just check out my Facebook page and find out about Black Friday deals coming up there. Either way is good. Okay, more model answers. Let's have a look at the second approach to IELTS speaking part two. Okay, so the free flow approach, as you can imagine, is just speaking freely and flowing like a river, right? You just focus on the main question at the top and you forget the bullet points. Forget the bullet points? Yes, it's a common myth, right? You actually don't have to follow the bullet points. No, really, you don't. So long as you're following that question at the top, for example, let's look at a cue card here. Describe a time someone asked for your opinion. You can ignore who, why, what. Just focus on the time someone asked for your opinion. Absolutely fine. And this allows you to speak more freely. There's less structure. And as ideas come to your head, you speak out. Of course, in your one minute preparation, you want to be thinking of two or three main ideas or details you want to talk about. 
And if you have time, prepare that first sentence. So you start with a bang confidently, but then you just go with the flow. That's me going with the flow. What you'll find when you speak is when it comes to coherence, you'll be saying things like and, then, and then, so, and, and then, so, finally. That is perfectly fine. That is also natural spoken English. That's how we speak. So you don't need to overthink, right? You don't actually have to overthink complex vocabulary, fancy vocabulary. Your focus is on the fluency. Part two is a great opportunity to show your fluency. The structured approach is good, and I think it's slightly better for slightly lower levels because you've got structure. This is good for slightly higher levels, um, and it allows you to just go because I've seen students, when they get on a roll and they're not thinking too much, the most beautiful language can come out and it can really, really help you in part two. You can take care of fancy vocabulary in part three, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this particular question. This is what I prepared. Um, someone asked for your opinion. I was going to talk about my dad. He was asking about a present for my wife. It's a very common situation, right? And I said, no clothes, earrings are good. And he asked me to buy the present. So I've already decided the things I want to talk about, right? Notice I'm not following the bullet points. It's prepared, but there's lots of room to flow. Okay, let's have a look what this model might look like. And then after, I'll analyze some of the language to give you some really useful phrases. Let's do it. <laughs> So I'd like to tell you about the time that my father asked me for my opinion and it was about my wife's birthday present. So this is a very run of the mill situation, right? Where my wife's birthday is coming up and my father just doesn't know what to buy her. This is made doubly complicated because we live abroad. So he can't keep track of what she has and what she doesn't have. And maybe her tastes have changed. And also, you know, my dad's getting on. I mean, he's 80 odd, right? So it's hard for him to get out and buy presents and be creative and so on. So what happens every year? We go through this routine. He calls me up and says, what should I buy for your wife? So this year I said, well, listen, don't buy clothes because there's always a problem with the size, getting the wrong size and her taste in clothes changes like the weather. So that's difficult. Um, I said, earrings are a winner. You can't go wrong with earrings because it's always the same size and different styles match different clothes. And she loves earrings. So he said, that's great. Excellent. Could you go and buy them for me? <laughs> and that makes me laugh because then I go out and buy them and wrap them up and I present them and say, of course, this is from my father. I think this is quite a funny situation. I mean, we go through this rigmarole every year. It's the same phone call, it's the same answer, and it's quite comical. But I guess I feel flattered. I mean, flattered that my dad is asking for my opinion, um, but it's quite amusing also. So yeah, that's the time that my father asked um, for my opinion. Great. So a nice model answer. <laughs> My dad, he's so funny, right? Great. So can you go and buy them? <laughs> what? <laughs> Lovely. So what I'm going to do now, again, very briefly, just give you an analysis of the answer so that you can pick out the most useful vocabulary and grammar and coherence to help you improve your spoken English and give better answers. So this is exactly what I do on my online courses to help you get better and better. So let's have a look. I begin. Um, again, notice the signpost. I'd like to tell you about the time that direct to the point. Uh, my father asked for my opinion about my wife's birthday present. 
This is a very run of the mill situation. Run of the mill, run of the mill, link them together. Run of the mill. Great, meaning ordinary, usual, right? This is a run of the mill house. This is a, 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 a run of the mill cup, <laughs> very ordinary. I know it's a mug, but there you go. So a run of the mill situation. My wife's birthday is coming. Father doesn't know what to buy. This is made doubly complicated, doubly complicated, super complicated or extra complicated um, because we live abroad. He can't keep track of. To keep track of is to follow the progress or changes of something. You know, when you buy something on Amazon and you can follow the progress of the delivery, right? You can keep track of it. Um, and then my dad's getting on, right? To be getting on. Phrasal verbs are such an important part of spoken English. So this is nice. To be getting on means to be getting older. Not to get on, no, to be getting on, right? He's getting on. My grandma is getting on. My dad is getting on. He's 80 odd. So when you put odd after a number, it means approximately or more or less, right? I've got 20 odd students waiting here, more or less, approximately. Lovely. Let's move on. Um, here, just looking at some grammar of the middle part of my answer. It's nice to use emphasis and to emphasize things in, in English because it shows off a, a richer sense of grammar, right? So instead of saying every year we go through this routine, I can say what happens every year is we go through this routine, right? You can see emphasizing every year we do this. What happens every year is we do this. The is you can drop. And I do. I say, so what happens every year? We go through this routine. He calls me up and says, da, da, da. OK, calls me up. Phrasal verb, call up someone. Same meaning as to phone or to call. Um, and then just notice as I go through, this becomes an anecdote. Now, remember, this is a free flowing answer, right? So. This is very common, I think, when you're giving an anecdote, like a short personal story. I said this, and then he said that, and then she said, and then I replied, right? It's very normal to have that. I said, I said, he said, she said. If you look at this written, you probably think it's too simple. It's too repetitive. But no, that's your mistake because this is not written English right? It's spoken English, so it's fine. What's important is the flow and the fluency, okay? It's a really important point. If you try and give every answer with great fluency, complex vocabulary, complex grammar, you can't do it in every answer. Some answers will just have some complex vocabulary, everything else simple. Other answers, like this one, free-flowing, Simple vocab, simple grammar, but lots of fluency and flow. So you need that balance, right? Let's look at the final bit. Um, here, just picking out a couple of words that came up, right? Um, we go through this rigmarole. Rigmarole, can you say? Rigmarole. Dee, dee, dee. A rigmarole is a complicated and annoying routine or procedure, right? You know when sometimes you go to the bank and they ask you to fill in a form and then you have to fill in another form. It's a rigmarole. It's complicated. It's annoying. <laughs> so we go through this rigmarole every year. Here, it's a bit funny, right? But it's a bit annoying. But, you know, Dad, it's not annoying. It's just a bit funny. <laughs> it's a rigmarole every year. Uh, he asks me, I answer, same answer. To be flattered, I feel flattered, which means I feel honoured or pre uh, pleased because somebody has said something nice to me, right? I feel flattered. I'm flattered he's asking for my opinion. Great. Okay. Again, you'll notice some of the connectors here and 
but, but, so, yeah, it's very simple, but fluency is excellent. Okay, that's it. That's the analysis, the model answer to help you speak better and better English. Let's move on. So there we have it, the structured approach and the free flow approach. I hope this has been useful for you. If you've liked the video, do like it, subscribe, turn on notifications. And remember, you can download the PDF of this lesson down in the description. And then you'll also get on the mailing list to find out about the Black Friday offers coming next week. Um, I'll be doing Black Friday and also the Saturday, the 26th, I'll be doing some live lessons, sessions, on YouTube and Facebook, so keep an eye open for those. There are prizes, discounts, free PDFs. You can even win uh, a mock test for IELTS speaking with me one-on-one. -on -one. How nice would that be? Great. In the meantime, well, you may want to go and watch another video to improve your IELTS speaking. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, I've really enjoyed it and uh, I will see you soon. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.